Praise the Lord, everybody. Now, you all might want to direct those folks out in the foyer. Come on in. Uh, a lot of folks over there setting up food and so forth, so they'll be, they'll be coming in a little bit. Sister Crystal is going to teach this morning. So uh, she's going to come. This is it's, it's a, it's a multi-purpose day. It's Pentecost Sunday, Family Sunday. So we've, we've got a lot of celebr- lots of Memorial Day weekend. We've got a lot to celebrate today, a lot going on. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to her, and she's going to teach this morning. She's got a great lesson from the Word of the Lord. Everybody give Sister Crystal a big hand in Jesus' name. Surprise! As as the tradition is, I have a joke. Um, There was a lady that was working at her office, and she got a phone call from her daughter. Mommy, I'm sick. I'm sick. I need you, Mommy. I need you. So she rushed to go get her daughter some medicine, and as she was headed to the pharmacy, the um, it started raining a little bit, and so she thought, I'll just run in and run out. I'll be fine. So she ran in. She ran back out, and she went to open the door, and you know that sinking feeling that you get when the door doesn't open and you don't have the key in your hand? That was the same feeling she had. And so she's like, oh, no, what am I going to do? So she ran into, back into the pharmacy and was like, does anybody know how to break into a car? Can, if I find a hanger, can anybody get me in my car? My daughter's sick. I've got to get home. And they were like, no, ma'am, we don't know anybody. So she goes back out. She leans her head against the car. And she goes, God, please send me somebody to help me. I've got to get back to my daughter. About that time, this raggedy truck pulls up. This man goes, ma'am, do you need something? And she said, oh, I need somebody to help me get in my car. I've locked my car door. And he goes, oh, I can get you in there in a couple seconds. So he reaches out and God gets out and he just has her right in the car. She goes, you are such a wonderful man. He said, no, ma'am, I'm really not. I just got out of jail for stealing cars. She said, oh, thank you, Jesus. You sent a professional. (laughs) It's all in your outlook. (laughs) So today I am going to speak, it matters what you say. Yeah, there you go. It matters what you say. And sometimes we forget that, don't we? First verse, Proverbs 15, 4, says, A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness, yeah, whatever, therein is a breach in the spirit. Proverbs 16, 24 says, Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bone. Proverbs 18, 4, The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. Apparently, God thinks it's pretty important about the words that we speak and the words of our mouth. So, I feel like I I don't have my own microphone here, and I feel like it's really bassy. But that's just... I'm used to my mic. (laughs) A music professor told a story of a young man in her class. He sat in the back. His body language was very non-approachable. He did not participate. His projects, his test scores were very mediocre. He missed quite a bit. He was just not a standout student at all. Yet every class she looked for him and tried to connect, but she never could. As the semester went on, his appearance became rougher, more disheveled. With each class that he chose to attend, it came time for the semester exams. Everyone was nervous. The professor wondered if he would even show up. He did come, and he seemed to put more work and effort into his semester test than he had all semester. The professor worked all weekend grading tests, figuring the final grade for all of her students. 
The following week, each student had an appointment with her to find out their final grade. He came in looking very despondent. She invited him in and he sat down. She began by going over his semester work and she said, you passed your test with a D, but I do not accept that. You are not a D person. Your final grade for my class is an A because I know that you are capable of an A. He left stunned. As he rose to leave after thanking her, she said something she did not plan to say. She had never said this to another student. As he walked out of the door, she said, I love you. She later received a phone call thanking her for her kind words that she had spoken to the young man. What the professor had no way of knowing is the older brother of her student was very unkind and had bullied her student to the point that he felt unloved and suffered from low self-esteem. He felt he could do nothing right. And the parents were so busy working, they never realized that this was even a problem. The phone call continued. The young man had decided that failing this class would be his last failure. He left a note for his family that he was sorry that he was a failure and an embarrassment. He decided he was going to end his life and he had made all the preparations. But because your words that made him feel loved, he returned home to a family that was devastated at what they had discovered, and they have reached out for help. Our words can bring life or death, maybe not as drastically as this story, but we can bring death to someone, their reputation, or we can speak life. The Bible speaks of wholesome words, gentle words, pleasant words. Our words not only have an effect on other people, they have an effect on us. Mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Uh, during COVID, and even now, I mean, COVID was just like the beginning of all the crazy. And COVID's gone, it's gone whatever, but the crazy's still here. And if we continue to listen to the negative things that are constantly being pushed at us, we can fall right in line with those. And we forget about the kind words. So how do we train our thoughts to dwell on the positive instead of the negative? Well, here is a list I found, and I tweaked it to line up with what, the, what God says. Number one. Begin your day with the Lord. Reading his word daily, praying, listening to good music throughout the day, keeping your mind in constant state of prayer throughout the day. I, years ago, you know, I had the, I did a, um, a thing on Facebook every morning, the, country, the comfy chair. And when I did that, it started because I would just put a verse on my page so whenever I was going through my day I could just look at that throughout the day it was a positive verse and you know that was just kind of what my thought process was and then I was reading a book and it kind of I would say something about the book I was reading and it ended up turning into a much bigger thing I was going through some of my notes last night I, I guess I don't even remember doing this but I guess I ran off a bunch of my comfy chair um, posts. And thank you. And so whenever I was reading them, I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot that happened. Or wow, I, re I remember that, you know. But having your day start with positive and praying in the morning, it, gets, it gives you a spirit or a feeling of accomplishment. And just knowing that God has, is there. And so beginning your day like that is much better than walk, waking up, which I've done this too, if I have to be honest, screaming and yelling at the kids to get up, running through the house going, grab a Pop-Tart, we don't have time for eggs. And running through your day like that, it just throws you on a bad path. And it just continues on that path. The next thing is be thankful. In everything, give thanks. 
I look back at things that at the time I could not find anything to be thankful for. But now I look back and I see where God was in control. He led me down the path that he was leading me, took me somewhere. It just didn't leave me abandoned. It just didn't leave me hanging out by myself. What he was teaching me took me someplace else. You know, we ask God for, God, I want to be used of you. I want, I want you to use me. I want to do great things for you. But then whenever God takes us down a path, we don't want to go down the path. We just want to go from zero to 60. There's a path, that, there's a process. You don't just get the Holy Ghost one night and decide to the next day that you're living on top of the world and, and you're going to be the pastor of a new church. That didn't work that way. There's a process. And there's a process for all of us. You know, we, we learn. We, but through learning is what God takes us through when we learn. Because I didn't wake up one morning and just decide I was the smartest kid in the room and I was going to be drinking my bottle today, and I was going to be running down the street tomorrow. I had to learn to crawl. I heard, had to learn to wobble, <laughs> waddle, and then I learned to walk. And once I became very good at walking, then I learned to run. And it's called, it's a process. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I read this somewhere or what it was, but anyway, I decided years ago, I decided that I was going to write a be thankful book for my husband. So I got this real cute little book, and I, every day, I wrote down three things that I was thankful for, for him, of him. And at first, um, I wasn't say it was hard because, yeah, you know, it's all those, you know, I thank you for providing for our family, blah, 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 blah. And then it got to where, okay, now I have thanked him for that. I've thanked him for that. Now what do I start? I had to start looking for stuff. And every day I was looking for things to be thankful for. And because I was looking for things to be thankful for, I wasn't finding the negative things that I didn't want to be thankful for. So I, every day I did this, and I started in January, January 1, and uh, I think I ended up giving it to him. I was going to do it for a whole year, but whew, that's a lot of work. So I, <laughs> I ended up giving it to him for Valentine's Day, and every day was something that probably usually two or three things that I was thankful for. And, you know, you don't get my husband very often. But he picked it up and started looking at it and realized what it was, and he started crying. He was amazed that probably just because I took the time to even think about that. The more I concentrated on being thankful, the easier it became. And it's like that in life. The more you're thankful, the more easily we are to be thankful for him and it's amazing how much stuff we find that we can be thankful for when we're looking this one I have to work at because I I really have to work at this one train yourself to be kind there's a quote floating around and it is simply in a world you can be anything be kind Kindness is contagious, much like your smile. If you're kind to others, the majority of the time, kindness will be returned. Now, there are moments, there are people, they ain't going to return that kindness. But you just smile at them and walk on. But I, I have to really work at that because I am much like my father. <laughs> he was nice. He was sweet. But I, see, I know people that they just, they send cards just because. And they are, 
they go and do nice things to pe for people just because. And Sister Pettit will just bring somebody a gift. I was thinking about you. I'm thinking about them, but I'm thinking about all those other things I got to do, and I don't have time to pick up a little plant and give somebody or something. You know, I just so I have to work on that one. But in a world you can be anything, be kind. Take time for yourself. If we are drained mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, it is very easy to be negative. And also, if you are drained mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, it is very hard if someone was to talk to you about God, you've got nothing to give them. Somebody at work says something about the Lord or something, and you really, you would really like to respond back and say something profound, but you got nothing profound because you're drained. You're not filling up your tank. You're just, you're just, you've drained, you got nothing left. Why do you think that during COVID, people that would have never got on Facebook and played a song or sang a song or just played music. Every day it was constant. People were, were doing stuff. And it was, it was to encourage themselves. But by doing that, it also encouraged other people. We would go on there and many times on Sunday morning, I hope I don't cry here, but many times on Sunday morning, I would go on and Missy would be playing a song on her piano at home. And just videoing her hands and singing a song. And the people that that touched was amazing. And that happened all over the world. I mean, all over the country, people were doing that. And we have to take time to fill ourselves up so we are ready to help someone else. Stress less. Let's all say that one together. Stress less. We must come to the knowledge that there are some things we just have no control over. Not a thing we can do about it. You can sit, you can brew, you can cry, you can do whatever you want to do, but it's not going to change. You know, I mean, you can worry if you want to. You can drive yourself nuts if you want to. But it's not going to change until God does the changing. So there's an old song. My mother used to sing this song. I can hear her singing it now. Leave it there, leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. It's an easy song to sing. It's a little harder in practice, isn't it? It's a little hard. But never doubt. He, he, will, he will do it if we trust him. There's been times I've, I've come down here at this altar and I have cried. I'm like, Lord, I'm leaving it here. I'm done. I'm leaving it here. And I'm on my way home and I'm like, oh, God, what am I going to do about that? I'm like, wait a minute, I just left it at the altar, but I've already picked it up. And we have to make a practice of saying, no, that's back at the altar. I'm, I'm done. I'm not worrying about it. I, this is my thing. So that is my, uh, I try really hard to do that. I wish I had known about this whenever my kids were younger. Um, but I, I did not know. And so I, um, I was listening to a message a lady was preaching, and she was talking about I declare statements, affirmation statements. And some parents do them every morning before their kids go to work or go to school. Uh, and this is the one she does. She, she is the mother of three boys, and from the time they were little boys, she said this to them every morning to the time when, when she was speaking. She said, now they're teenagers, and they put their hands over their ears and like, no! But she said they, they get to hear it anyway. 
You are a man of integrity and character. You will love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. You will be a blessing to your teachers and a blessing to your friends. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are a leader, not a follower. And um, you are a man of valor. You have the whole armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. You will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in, my ma- in your mouth. Every day, these kids are now in their 20s, and they have heard that every day. And so guess what? They walk like men with integrity. They walk like men of valor because they have been told that all their life because kind words have been going in their heads, words of their strength and their love for God. I... uh, I started doing, mine's much shorter because I couldn't remember all that. But um, I did, I declare that God is doing something new in my life every day. And I, I read Limitations 3, 22 and 23. They have it up on the, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed Because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Every morning I am so thankful for the new and the mercies of God. He has such great benefits to our life. But we have to be open to those. We have to be open to his mercies. We have to be open because just because he gives us something, if we don't take it, We're getting nothing. We're just standing there like a big obstruction. You know, he's on the other side trying to hand us stuff, and we're not willing to open the door, or we're not willing to walk around the wall because, you know, we just, whatever. Find a life verse. Find a life verse that you can read and quote every day. Jeremiah 29, 11 is one of my favorites. He has plans for me. He knew from the very moment I was conceived what I would be and what I would do. And those those quotes, I, I changed my life verse from time to time, and that was one for a while. Find something that fits into your life, maybe something that you're hoping to do, hoping to be. There are people in the Bible that were extremely negative about their beginnings. God asked Moses to lead the children out of Egypt. He was convinced he couldn't do it. He not only led them out, there were hundreds of miracles throughout his leadership. Gideon was convinced he was too poor and his tribe was the weakest, but he was able to do what God asked him to do. What began as negative became a positive. And it is important during this time that we fill our hearts with positive statements because everything you hear around us is opposite of that. You go to work and it's constantly bad administration, bad this, bad that, our insurance stinks, blah, 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 blah. Everything is bad. I thank God for our insurance because if we didn't have our insurance, We would be in serious financial trouble if we didn't have our insurance. It may not be Blue Cross Blue Shield, and I may have to put some money into it, but I'm thankful for my insurance. And, you know, yeah, I have to get up and go to work every day. I've got a job. I'm thankful that I have a job. I'm thankful that I get a paycheck. Would I like it to be a million dollars? Sure, but guess what? I don't have an education to get a million dollars. That's on me. That's on me. So being just hearing negative thoughts all the time can so easily turn us into these people that we're not kind. We're stressed out. We, you know, all the opposite of what we need to be doing to have a joyful life in Christ because we're listening to negativity all the time. 
Instead of always filling your life, filling your life with I can't statements, let's start filling them with, with God's help, I can statements. Find something. Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things, whatsoever things are lovely, things of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. He did not mention the bad reports and the things that were lies and the things that were unjust. That, those are not mentioned in that scripture anywhere. It's the good things. And our minds need to be on the good things of God. And look around. Like I, somebody did this a, a long time ago when I was a kid, I think. And they said they did a, a grateful journal. And every morning they wrote down five things they were grateful for. And, it, you know, you could only put them once. It wasn't, I'm thankful for my house, my mom, my family, you know, okay, one time and then you got to go on. But a friend of mine was going through a divorce and it was a very bad situation. And she woke up every morning in tears, sobbing, devastated. And before she would get out of bed, she would still be laying there crying. And she would post I am thankful for, and she wrote five days, five things every day she was thankful for. And she said, some days I had to dig so deep, I truly did not think I was going to find them. But every day I found them. And as I was thinking on those things, God brought it to, brought it to where it was easier, and it became more, less difficult to find those things that I was thankful for. And um, so today, smile, don't stress, be happy. There used to be a song that said, don't worry, be happy. That really stressed my dad out. He hated that song. <laughs> we, did, <laughs> we sang it a couple of times, and he was like, I hate that song. But um, so have a great day. And everyone, just think about the things of God today and tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday, and Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen? Amen. It's there. The goodness and the mercy of God is there. All you have to do is look for it. Sometimes it's following you. Sometimes it's behind you, but it's there. Amen. Thank you, Sister Crystal. What a great word this morning. It matters what you say. It matters what you say. Amen. Praise God. I don't know what time it is. All right. You're getting out, well, really early today. This has never happened when I've called. This does not happen. I, I, I take after my bishop here and... And um, go a little longer than 1026. But uh, we, you got a few minutes. Church starts at 11. It's Pentecost Sunday, Memorial Day weekend, Family Day. We got a lot going on today. So we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to be worshiping the Lord here in just a minute. We're going to have some church. Amen. We're going to have some church. Amen. So God bless you in Jesus' name.